Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Wellesley Little League, I guess, Arm Care Seminar. We, we never really officially named it as we went through this. This is the first year that we've ever done it before. Um, so for the time being, anyway, it's the Arm Care Seminar. Uh, my name is Patrick Doyle. I am the safety officer for uh, Wellesley Little League. I uh, just came on the board about uh, three or four months ago or so. Um, let me just give you a quick background on the, I guess, the genesis of this whole seminar, how it came about, um, and what you can expect tonight. The basic uh, premise was, oh shoot, but over the last six years as I've been coaching um, at various levels of the Little League, you kind of hear as you go along various stories, especially once you get up into the National League and American League levels, where a couple of times a year you'll hear about kids getting their arms hurt, um, either from pitching or not even from pitching all the time, just from throwing the ball. Um, and you know, in the background, I kind of acknowledged it. I somewhat paid attention to it. Never really thought a heck of a lot about it, other than the fact that, well, you know, too bad for the kid because it, you know, kind of limits their ability to play. Um, until it happened to my kid this last uh, summer. Um, he got tendonitis of the elbow. It wasn't anything too serious, but it, it made me kind of sit up and take notice, saying, well, you know, this obviously I keep hearing it over and over again that kids develop these problems. And he never even pitched a heck of a lot during the uh, season. He threw, a, I think, a moderate number of pitches. Um, and whether it was mechanics or whatever, bottom line is he developed an arm problem. So when I was brought onto the board uh, back in September as a safety officer, it just kind of clicked in my mind saying, well, geez, um, after I've been through the diagnosis with the doctor, and she said tendonitis is a number of reasons that it could have been, but here's the likely ones. And I said at the end of the, um, at the, end of the session with her, I said, okay, we've gone through it this year, it's gonna get better and re better relatively quickly. How can I avoid this in the future? And she said simply, strengthening of flexibility. And it was like one of those, wow, I could have had a V8 moments. You just sit there and say, I'm not that dumb. I should have thought of that before. So taking that experience and then combining it with the fact that now I have, a, I guess, a, a forum to bring it to other people, I basically said, well, you know, here's, here's an opportunity to try and give people their V8 moments ahead of time before it happens to them. So when we kind of, um, I brought this to the board back in October as a potential idea, and the unanimity of it was like, yeah, what a great idea. Let's go and do something like that because it, it provides value to people and it gives people a chance to learn about something to prevent the injuries that we, as, as well as all Little Leagues, have, the injuries to the arm, uh, ostensibly from throwing. So here we are today. Um, the basic thing that we're going to cover is we're going to cover, I guess, ways to combat um, the injuries to the arm through strengthening exercises, flexibility exercises, um, and how to just prevent them. And I guess some post-pitching uh, types of uh, exercises or care as well. Um, and what we have tonight is uh, two speakers that um, actually I talked to Carl back uh, in November when I came up with this idea. Um, and I just said, would you be interested in something like this? Because Garrett had, I had taken him to uh, Carl to just get these exercises together myself so that he could go into next year. And Carl said, yeah, I'll do it in a second. Um, and he said three things. One is I want water and cookies at the presentation, which I got for him. You're welcome. And the other thing that he asked about uh, was he said he wanted uh, season tickets to Reedy Field this year. And I said, geez, you know, that's a tough one. So we brought it to the board, and by a vote of two to one, you guys can have your season tickets this year if you really want them. Um, anyway, uh, Carl immediately re recommended Dr. Bay, who he's worked with, I guess, on many occasions. Uh, Dr. Bay is an orthopedic surgeon out of Children's Hospital. Um, he's also an assistant professor at Harvard Medical School. Carl is the co-owner of um, Sports and Physical Therapy of Wellesley. He's got a lot of alphabets after his uh, name as well. So they're both very, very eminently qualified. I think just based on my experience with Carl already um, and the exercise that, they, that he's given me to, uh, to uh, give to Garrett to do, um, you'll see if, in fact, you're able to follow these and get your kids to follow these during the season, um, and before the season and during the season, hopefully we're going to see um, a lot of improvements in the uh, potential for injury um, and the actuality of injury, too. And one of the things, too, um, before, I, uh, before I turn it over to these guys, actually two things. One is um, we want this to be of an in interactive type of a seminar. So if you guys have questions, uh, these guys would like to talk to you about your situations, about questions you have about the exercises, about the physiology or whatever it might be. Feel free to ask the questions during the um, seminar. Um, and then also, if you didn't RSVP initially, 
Um, what I want to try and do is I want to, um, at the end of this season, kind of do a survey of all the people that have attended this uh, seminar to find out, number one, if in fact their kids followed the routines, if they're able to, and if in fact they had any injuries, and just try and match it up with, well, okay, people have been following this, this and they haven't had injuries, or maybe they have. Um, just so we can get a sense going forward, because I try, like to try and do something like this every year, to get a sense going forward of um, whether this type of a program is actually working. My sense is it is, because the numbers, I had no idea what to expect initially. I was thinking maybe 25, 30 people. This is much better than I had thought. So obviously you guys are engaged. You're concerned about heading off these, um, these injuries before they happen, and that's a great thing. So, um, so anyway, if you didn't RSVP initially, if you can either just go on the website and shoot me an email with your, uh, to let me know what your email address is, because I want to get in touch with all of you guys after the season just to uh, do that little survey. So with that, um, it's up to you guys. Dr. Donald Bay from Children's Hospital and in the blue shirt, Carl Gust Gustafson from the uh, Wellesley um, Sports and Physical Therapy. Guys, it's all yours. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Don Bay. Um, I work at Children's Hospital Boston, and one of my interests professionally as well as personally is in upper limb issues, particularly in young people. I don't personally take care of adults. All I do is look after uh, children and adolescents, some collegiate athletes with upper extremity troubles. I'm very honored to be here. I think all of us are here because we're passionate about giving our kids an opportunity to have very healthy, fulfilling, successful athletic pursuits, and so um, it's really nice to uh, appreciate the invitation. Um, I normally wear many hats. The hat I'm going to wear tonight is one of educator, and I'm going to try to share with you from an orthopedic surgeon's perspective a bit about some very specific things that we see in young growers. Um, it's not going to be exhaustive, and I'm going to try to be very respectful of your time. So we're going to try to cut through a lot of the fluff and get more to the meat of uh, some of the things that I see commonly and I, some of the things I know Carl sees commonly as well. What are those things? Those things include the following. Shoulder pain from something that in my world is called internal rotation deficit. So we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about elbow pain on the inside of the elbow in throwers. So in my world we call that medial elbow pain. Then we're also going to talk about a very specific condition that kids get from throwing too much one that's fairly serious, and the name for that is osteochondritis desiccans. The, the fancy names and the jargon is probably not so important, um, but I think the concepts will come across. Um, in many ways, I'm just a setup man. Carl's going to be the closer. So I'm going to set the stage, tell you a little bit about the things I see, what the actual cause of some of these things are, and Carl's going to teach you and teach your athletes how to prevent and how to treat. So really, I'm actually thrilled, and I'm excited to hear Carl speak as well. So uh, not to belittle anyone's intelligence, but just to start perhaps on common ground. Um, the shoulder essentially is a ball and socket joint, and we're going to start with the shoulders first. If you imagine taking the cross-section of your body at the level of your shoulder and looking into your body almost as if you were looking at the rings of a tree trunk after you cut a tree down, you would literally see a socket that is relatively shallow schematically here in black, and a ball, which is supposed to be that big white round thing there. So it's a ball and a socket. That ball and socket obviously can rotate and move in many different directions. And around that ball and socket, we have a capsule, which is like a thin lining that holds the ball in place, and a very special structure that I'm sure all of us have heard about in the sports pages and on talk radio called the labrum. So the labrum is just a rim or bumper of cartilage that lines and rims the socket. That's all the labor is. In addition, uh, if you keep up in the world of New England politics and Boston sports, um, it's, I think you're aware that there's a tendon for the biceps muscle that actually has its anchor point at 12 o'clock on that socket. And so oftentimes when people have shoulder troubles, there are associated biceps tendon problems. And for a lot of people, I think that doesn't make much sense. But understand that the biceps tendon has its origin or anchor point up in the ball and socket joint, OK? The shoulder is really a wonderful machine. And so if you look at the phases of throwing, it's amazing what the shoulder in an adult pitcher and even a youth pitcher, what the shoulder can do. 
and this has been studied, and not to bore you with the details, but from late cocking to follow through, the angular velocity, though for a short period of time, is literally hundreds of thousands of degrees per second. Tremendous amounts of speed and force in a very short period of time through, this particular, through these particular phases of throwing. Not surprisingly then, if you're asking this ball and socket joint to do these incredibly fast and powerful things, it's going to get a lot of wear and tear, a lot of load. And one of the loads that the shoulder sees as a player throws a ball is upon follow through and release, there's a yanking motion, a pulling motion, or what we call tension. And the forces, or the tension forces that you can see, particularly in the back of the shoulder, are very, very high. We see this particularly in people who throw heaters and sliders. Those are the two pitches that are notoriously tough on the back of your shoulder on follow through. What's the big deal? Why am I taking your time to tell you about this? So it turns out that with repetitive throwing and this repetitive stretching in the back of your shoulder, your body's going to respond, and it responds by trying to make things better and heal. So if you imagine something in the back of the shoulder being repetitively stretched, the body will respond by making some scar tissue and trying to tighten it up. And that's a, a normal adaptive response. For this reason, you see pictures in the papers in Sports Illustrated, like the one on the left, where pitchers have this tremendous ability to go way back, which helps them adaptively to throw a baseball. But unfortunately, if you look carefully at these players, because the back of the shoulder has gotten very tight, they lose the ability to come inwards. They lose internal rotation. So not to be funny, but if everyone literally, being respectful of their neighbors, takes their arms up like this and brings it down, you can actually feel the pulling sensation in the back of your shoulder. And if there are any old ball players or pitchers here, you may find that you can't go down as far as your neighbors. So with this repetitive process, you can, as the capsule tightens in the back, you can lose normal rotation. What's the big deal? This can lead to problems. So one problem it can lead to is pain. Why on earth would this cause pain? Well, if you remember that the ball is normally seated in the socket, if part of that capsule that surrounds the ball gets tight, the ball is not going to be centered in the socket. It's going to shift slightly on the socket. So now if you have a ball that's not centered in the socket that you're subjecting to tremendous velocities and force. And that can actually cause troubles mechanically with how that ball and socket joint works. And these things, over time, and I've seen this now even in you know, teenagers, younger teenagers, in fact, can actually lead to so much wear and tear where you can get tears of that labrum we were talking about. You can get injuries and tears to the biceps tendon. You can actually get rotator cuff problems even in young Little League athletes. And these are problems we really wish to avoid. You really want to stay out of the operating room. You really want to stay out of those types of troubles. We want our kids, again, to be healthy and successful. Not so long ago, five or 10 years ago, we, almost, we never saw this in teenagers or Little League athletes. And these days, it seems, almost every thrower has some degree of this. And so part of the reason I bring this up is it's a relatively newer phenomenon in the world we live in. And it's a phenomenon that can sneak up on you. It's a phenomenon that can lead to big problems and one we want to avoid and try to prevent. Sir. Great question. So there are probably a couple reasons why we're seeing this more. We're probably looking more. So maybe it's been there the whole time, but we weren't smart enough to understand a lot of this. So a lot of the understanding in the orthopedic world has come literally in the past five to 10 years on this particular topic. The other thing, and this is my personal philosophy, is that kids are doing more at higher intensities at younger ages. And so if you take um, something that we used to only see in adult baseball pitchers. There are some professional league players who've had classic troubles with these types of things that are literally jeopardize their ability to play. So I think we're starting to see it in younger kids because our younger kids are throwing harder, throwing more often, throwing at a younger age. And not getting the education that we hope you're going to get today about simple preventative measures that can be pursued. So uh, the treatment principles are really to prevent this, and Carl's going to go over that next. So I'm going to stop and let Carl take over. Thank you. I'm Carl Gusterson. I'm a physical therapist, athletic trainer.